I'm Colonel Paul Aguirre, uh, and I'm here to share a story, a personal story, about my nephew, Ivan Aguirre. So Ivan Aguirre was born uh, here in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, really in a family that had quite a bit of um, distress and, uh, and wasn't in the best environment. His father had a disability that uh, wouldn't allow him to, for gainful employment, almost uh, lost his life. And uh, his father raised uh, Ivan, who was the oldest of three. He raised him. Um, and uh, despite all those odds, Ivan was not only able to um, attend Arizona State on a full ride scholarship, but also Brophy, where he had uh, academic achievement before that and athletic achievement, and uh, was a great role model. His uh, even in that environment where very few kids are able to pull themselves up and out, and and have such an opportunity for um, uh, unlimited potential in life. Uh, he was such a good role model and such a good leader, even at a young age, that his younger sister, Gabby, went on to the University of Arizona on a full, full right scholarship. And his brother, Sam, now uh, is, will be entering ASU as a freshman this fall on a full right scholarship as well. So, so Ivan, growing up, was, um, um, was, was just a well-liked kid. He was very jovial. He was funny. Um, he, was, he was never shy. He was, uh, but uh, even with all that... Um, he was very respectful, uh, very respectful of me as an uncle, very respectful of my mother as his nana, and uh, just a really good kid that effortlessly flowed from uh, one group to another, uh, never seemed to be out of place, never seemed to be um, one that was uh, easily intimidated or shy. He just was one of those kind of people that didn't matter what the social environment was, he effortlessly went through that. And typically, uh, the center of attention too, whether it was his athletic teams, whether it was his friends from Brophy that later uh, became his uh, best friends at his fraternity there at Arizona State University. Um, just a really good kid, solid, um, salt of the earth, funny, uh, respectful, and just had unlimited potential. Ivan was studying and had a, a big weekend over Veterans Day in November of 2019. Um, I don't remember the specific details, but my brother, his father, AJ, um, said that he was, been, he was in contact with Ivan fairly continuously. They spoke every day and they, and they texted each other more times than that every single day. And Ivan was, um, was studying, uh, they were cramming. Uh, he had a buddy that was doing the same thing. And so he had uh, not gone out to some of the social activities that maybe a lot of his uh, fraternity brothers had gone to that weekend. And, um, and apparently he had mentioned in one of his texts that he was you know, getting a little anxious about his studies and the efforts he's been putting in. And I guess he, they were even staying up late that weekend, which was uh, not very typical for, um, for a college uh, you know, fraternity guy to be hanging in on the weekend to study. But Ivan was that type of kid where he would take care of business first and then uh, um, also go out and have a good time too as well. Um, so that weekend, um, a friend of his had, uh, had stopped by and was uh, visiting Ivan. And um, he had mentioned, Ivan had mentioned that, you know, he was kind of getting a little stressed out about about his studies and just his schedule and being able to keep up with everything and probably about missing out on a fun time over a three-day weekend too because that was uh, Veterans Day was a Monday. Um, and Ivan, um, he had mentioned that he had um, uh, a Xanax. And, uh, and Xanax, for those that don't know, are widely available on college campuses and probably campuses of, of schools uh, below that too, as are Adderall and a bunch of other types of uh, pills that you would normally get prescribed to you for anxiety or for ADD or for things like that. And uh, it's not unusual for college kids. They have several nicknames for them, but it's not unusual for college kids to do this. Um, and uh, I even took one um, and went to bed that night, and uh, he, he never woke up. Um, it, it, the pill that he took that his, and his friend took one as well, and his friend was okay. Uh, the pill that he took wasn't a, um, a prescription Xanax pill. It was a counterfeit uh, Xanax pill, of which there's a proliferation of them everywhere. And it was laced with what ended up being, for Ivan, a fatal dosage of fentanyl. 
Um, and so on Monday, November 11th, um, through a series of, uh, that time kind of is, is, it's kind of still hard for me to recall the series of events, but um, that he was found by uh, his fraternity brother or brothers, and uh, they called the authorities. Um, and during that day is um, when we found out that Ivan had passed away. So there's a big irony that goes along with Ivan's death and the fact that uh, uh, over 10 years of my career were dedicated to a program that, um, that is intended uh, to uh, um, fight illicit drug usage in our communities. Um, every National Guard, every, all the 54 states and territories in District of Columbia have a program that are called the Counter Drug Program in their particular uh, state or territory or district. And I spent um, a little over 10 years working on and off working with the Counter Drug Program in Arizona. Uh, because of my work with the Counter Drug Program in Arizona, and especially because of my focus, um, uh, which started a couple years before I even passed, on drug prevention efforts. Um, uh, uh, Ivan, as has every one of his, his cousins, and, uh, and certainly my kids, have heard me talk about uh, drug prevention and the dangers of illicit drug use nowadays, especially with the proliferation of uh, fentanyl and these counterfeit pills. Um, so um, to me, this was a personal passionate pursuit, drug prevention was for me um, for a couple of years before I even passed away. And uh, since his passing about nine months ago, um, it's uh, what's sur far surpassed the irony in my life that uh, uh, a nephew of mine, somebody that I was close to, somebody that I loved dearly, would die from a drug overdose. Uh, far surpassing that is the passion and the um, the will that I have to aid in drug prevention efforts at any, at any level, especially um, for those that don't fully understand how rampant it is on our campuses, again, at the college level and on down. And it's imperative that we get that word out to whether or not you're a college parent um, or you have loved ones that are in college or, or any, any kind of uh, uh, grade, uh, high school, junior high, grade school, we need to get the word out that there's uh, these drugs that are out there and, uh, and they, have the, they have the potential to be fatal if, uh, if taken by the wrong person at the wrong time. My family has a lot of gatherings where we celebrate Heck, from the time, like I mentioned, our 18 nieces and nephews, since at the time they were born, we, we have a tendency to um, all, uh, find any reason to celebrate. So you might be a one-year-old birthday party, and you might have all, all the six of my uh, siblings and all of their families, their, their spouses and their kids, all there for uh, the one-year-old's birthday party, because I think it's as much a party for us as it is anything. Um, it's a reason for us to get together, as families do. Uh, we, 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 we never just... Uh, uh, kept that to Thanksgiving and Christmas and the major holidays. We would get together, and um, I, and I'm telling you, my family. If you've seen Big Fat Greek Wedding, the movie, that's uh, that's quiet compared to uh, gatherings at, and a lot a lot of the gatherings are at my house. So that's quiet compared to an Aguirre family function, and yet through all that noise, and he wasn't a loud person. Ivan was just one of those types of people that uh, was magnetic, was charismatic. That when he came in people were drawn to him, including his older uncles. Uh, and, uh, and it's typically the other way, especially in a Hispanic household like ours. But Ivan just had um, a personality that just drew you to him. He was magnetic. He was um, a good-looking kid. He was just smart, respectful. And, um, and it just leaves a huge void, a huge void, a huge hole that can't be replaced. Um, I think every one of our my siblings have still, to this day, nine months after his death, have a big picture of him up in a prominent place. Mine is over the fireplace mantle in my living room. Um, and it's the only picture of anybody, uh, any person in there. Uh, no, that's not true. Pat Tillman's up there, too. I've got Pat Tillman and Ivan, both, uh, both ASU guys. Um, 
So it just leaves a big hole. Um, uh, just, just, just knowing uh, him, just having him as part of our family, and the potential, the unlimited potential that his life had, it's, it really leaves a big question mark as to what he would have become. You know, he said one of his dreams was to work for the Diamondbacks, and I'm sure if he set his sight on that, that's what he was probably going to be, do probably be doing at some point in time in his career. So um, there's nothing that I don't miss about Ivan not being here. There's, 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 I mean, everything about Ivan I miss, and uh, he was just a special kid. So today, as we're conducting this, this, this interview, my brother, AJ, is taking Ivan's younger brother, Sam, and moving all his goods into uh, the dorm at ASU where Ivan uh, was before he passed away. Um, and now for my brother AJ, uh, th that talk is, is, is not necessary. He understands um, the dangers of illicit drug use and how quickly, well, how, how normal they are, how common occurrence they are on college campuses. Uh, and how deadly they can be, and the devastating consequences that follow a needless death like that. So what I would tell every single parent is to have the conversation, to just stop and just say, hey, um, if not, watch this, watch this interview, because all it takes is one pill, and they're rampant, and you don't know where that pill came from. That pill very well could be a pressed by some dra drug trafficking organization from the cartels, the Mexican cartels or otherwise. Um, the ability to do that is, is, is every place. It's common. It's not hard to get a, a pill pressing machine and to get the ingredients you need to make um, to uh, make a fake Xanax, make a fake Adderall, make a fake uh, Oxycontin, Oxycodone pain pill. Um, I've had, I have and know two people who have lost their 20 some odd year old sons to what they thought was an overdose when their son was taking what he thought was a Percocet because of one had a back pain, one had knee pain. Um, that pill was a fake pill. It was laced with fentanyl, obviously a fatal uh, a dosage of fentanyl. And so the, the, the takeaway really is you cannot take, you cannot put anything into your system if it's not specifically prescribed to you. And if you do, you are truly playing Russian roulette. I don't recall where I've seen this, but, um, but this truly gives me the visual that I need to place emphasis with it. If a plane were to fall out of the sky today on whatever airline you want to say, and every passenger died, uh, and there was 150, 160 of them, uh, that would make front page news, and it would be, you know, the lead story on every national news, every national network, locally, and so on. Um, and you would bet they'd start looking into uh, the aviation industry and seeing if there's something that they need to um, look at before they start commercial flight again. And if that happened again the next day, um, you can bet that they would stop flying, uh, especially if it was a different type of aircraft. They, we would just stop flying. Everybody would be talking about the two planes that fell out of the sky on, on that day and the following day. Well, that's what's happening every day with fentanyl overdoses right now. There are that many people dying of fentanyl overdoses in this country. Um, but they're not linked together, and they're not put together in a dramatic fashion to where we stop and say, hey, hey, we can't allow our children uh, to be in environments where this is happening, we've got to empower them. We've got to have those conversations. We've got to make it to where, uh, rather than it be a common occurrence where college students exchange pills for anxiety or to sleep better that night or because they have pain and self-treat with a pill that they don't know its origin. Um, and they shouldn't be taken anyways because if it's not prescribed by a doctor, there could be other physical consequences leading up to death as well. That it's got, the common occurrence has to be that the next time a college kid asks another one of their friends, hey, you know, if you've got anxiety or do you need to sleep, I've got a pill that can help you with that, is to where that conversation ends up with where they say, nope, not only do I not want to do that, but we got to get rid of those pills because um, that's just playing Russian roulette. The point that I would tell everybody that has a college age kid um, as they take them off to that first day, freshman through senior year, is to have that conversation. 
tell them that uh, it's okay to walk away from that and it doesn't matter what everybody else did because these pills, you don't know what one pill in a bag of 100 has versus the next one. And there could be 99 pills and all 99 people that took that Xanax or took that Valium or took that um, whatever to go to sleep that night, your child or somebody that they love or know um, could take that one pill that has that fatal dosage and then that's it. It's a mistake you can't recover from.